Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at a uh, Jocosa Roracola specimen I had. Um, I've been keeping this one for a while, and um, for reasons I don't know, uh, it just happened to pass away. Uh, this is a female, and it measures at about uh, ten and a half millimeters. Um, so it's a little bit smaller than uh, max max size for a female. Uh, I'll get into a little bit how I know it's a female, but I've been keeping uh, different Jocosa Roracola. Uh, pretty much all relatively the same way, and this one just happened to pass away, like I said, and uh, I'm not really sure why, because all the other ones are doing fine, so I'm just going to say, you know, natural causes. Um, but uh, I just want to, you know, make a little quick video uh, telling you how you can identify one, and um, just a little bit about them, and so forth. Um, first of all, something you might notice is um, it has eight eyes. Uh, the iPhone camera actually picks that up really, really well. I'm pretty impressed. But uh, I drew a little bit of a shitty picture for you to look at. Um, so you have these four eyes you know, in a straight line down towards the bottom. You have two larger compact eyes resting on top. And then you have another two eyes on top of that. And uh, that line is to you know show you where the top of the head would be. So these very topmost eyes are, you know, almost like on the curvature of the uh, head heading towards the uh, thorax so um, you can kind of see that again with the impressive quality of this iPhone camera I'm actually really impressed I was gonna use my Ni Nikon D3100 but I actually can't pick it up I was like really surprised I'm like wow my iPhone is really actually better for macro shots than my own camera that I spent like hundreds of dollars on but <laughs> whatever I have to get a macro lens. I'm using the standard lens, so I, sh I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I just thought that it was funny that the uh, iPhone camera did such a better job. Um, you also have these two dark lines uh, running down its back, um, you know, these two dorsal lines. Uh, and regardless of age or um, you know gender, uh, it will look the same all across the board as far as coloration and stripes and stuff, stuff like that. And then on the... Uh, Abdomen, we have this milky chocolate colored uh, dorsal line leading towards the back of the abdomen. Come on, focus. So, yeah. And I don't know if I'll be able to pick it up. I got it a little bit earlier. I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you, you can see that there's. There you go. That's what I was looking for. You can see. Um, those spotted lines, uh, that milky chocolate line actually runs kind of in between them. I'm sure you can probably see that. So that's another thing you can look for. And I, I really like the coloration on these guys. They look, uh, especially the black lines, how they fade into the uh, earthy brown. I really like that. Uh, I found this in PA. I live in Pennsylvania, but uh, these guys actually aren't native here. They're actually not native in the United States at all. Uh, these are naturalized species from Europe. Yeah, I've talked about naturalized invasive species before, but in case you didn't see that video, uh, the difference between a naturalized and invasive species is an invasive species is relatively new to a habitat and it recently invaded. Um, and so, whatever federal commission uh, decides, you know, you know, when something becomes naturalized, considers it, you know, relatively new to a habitat. Whereas a naturalized species is a species that has been come so ingrained in the environment invaded uh it's here to stay it can't we can never get rid of it and it's formed you know like a solid breeding population has a uh, proper gene flow from other habitats um you know it's not just a localized population it's widespread as if it were part of our uh, fauna all along uh and these guys fit that uh category they're naturalized so they're here to stay Um, I drew another little crappy diagram. Um, a way you can tell if it's male or female, and I'll show you exactly where the pedipalps are located. Uh, they're located in front of the mouth, but I'll show you on the actual spider. Uh, but uh, a male will have these boxing glove-like shaped pedipalps, and this goes for all spiders. Um, some have bigger pedipalps, some have smaller pedipalps, so it'll be harder to see in some species or some families or whatever. Uh, but they all generally follow this, uh, picture. Um, they all have this to some degree. The males, have, like I said, have this boxing glove-like protrusion. 
and uh, that's actually where their spermatophore is located. So they'll actually uh, reach underneath a female during mating, and that's what they actually they insert. They don't have, uh, just to say it plainly, they don't have a penis like we do. So um, that's where their spermatophore is located, and they have two. This is on both of their pedipalps, whereas the females will just be a straight pedipalp. It'll have no boxing glove like protrusion at all. So if it doesn't have that protrusion, it's either a really immature male or um, it's a it's just a straight female. Um, it takes uh, about two or three months on most species, I believe, for them to develop this boxing glove like protrusion. Uh, I know this isn't a mature male because this one measured at about 2.5 uh, millimeters, as I said before. Males get to be about 10 millimeters max, and females get to be around 15 millimeters. Uh, so by the time it reached 10 millimeters, they already have had its pedipalps long ago, if you're a male. It would get its pedipalps somewhere around half the size. So, uh, and I actually have some male specimens um, that are currently still alive um, that I can use to back that up. But yeah, uh, flip her out for real quick. I'll show you the... Uh, Underside, not really much to see, but I guess I can give you a look at the fangs. Uh, this one must have died um, pretty recently because, this, you know, when anything dies, really, it like, gets really tense, but this one's still pretty loose. Um, I can still move it around its legs and everything without it, like, breaking apart. I wish I could pin it, but it's, like, impossible to pin spiders, and I haven't pinned anything ever, so... It's not really a good something to, not really a good thing for me to try to attempt. But you can see its fangs. Uh, pretty sharp fangs. I'm sorry my hands are shaking. I have shaky hands. Let me try this. Try this a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Sorry, the video quality is not so great, guys. But yeah, you can see its fangs right there. And there's the pedipalp right there underneath that leg. And again, you can see no boxing glove like protrusion. So this one was nearing, uh, it was, you know, like in between 10 and 11 millimeters. So it wasn't full grown. Females can get up to like around 15. But then again, there's some females that reach, you know, about 10 or 12 and they don't grow anymore. I mean, 15 is absolute maximum. Alright, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll be posting a video of uh, some more interesting things about Trichosa ruricola. Uh, I have a lot of them on hand, so uh, check those out if you're interested in learning more about these guys. Thanks for watching.